ask you all to take a moment, close your eyes, and imagine a peaceful place in your mind. As a child, my most peaceful place was coloring in one of the many notebooks my mom got me with as many colors as I could fit in my hand. Although I wasn't aware of it at the time, I believe I used art to express myself. Self-expression is an important part of the human experience. It's scientifically proven that once you've expressed your emotions, the reaction in your amygdala, which is a tiny part of the brain's gray matter involved in the experiencing of emotions, lessens the impact of the emotion on your central nervous system, making it easier to deal with. There are many forms of self-expression. Art therapy is one way that people can access a way to express their feelings. Art therapy is often used when people are suffering from various mental health issues, and it can be used to help them show what they are feeling in a way different from speech. It can be used to draw a moment or experience, and colors can be used to show how a person or event has affected you. Color psychology suggests that shades and colors can both boost your happiness and give you anxiety. A person's favorite color can say something about how they are feeling at a given time or about their personality. For example, people think red, passion, courage, attention, and anger. The amygdala has different reactions to different images because it, and because it is an ex, ex, part of experiencing in the emotions, drawing can affect what you are feeling and can help change the way you connect the image to the emotion. The positioning of the drawing or creation on the paper can also reveal something about the creator of the artwork. For example, if the drawing is predominantly on the right side of the page, then the creator's focus is more on the past and present, or if the drawing is predominantly on the left side of the page, the creator's focus is more on the future and can mean lack of good communication in the past. The size of the drawing also plays a role as it can suggest the self-esteem of the person. Smaller drawings, meaning lower self-esteem, while bigger drawings can signify a stronger sense of self-esteem. People have used art to express themselves since before they used written word. Cavemen drew on walls as an early method of communication, and then, in ancient Egypt, they used hieroglyphs, a mix of drawing and the beginning forms of letters, as their form of writing. Cultures have used carved charms, sacred paintings, in the process of healing and for sacrifices, and as humans have evolved, so is art, and how we use it. The different phases of art, whether it's based on religion, natural life, beauty, or personal expression. Some of the most famous artworks are based on, have many forms of self-expression, like Pablo Picasso, who had his blue period as a way to express himself. Famous artists are not the only people who use art to express themselves, though. There is no judgment in art, no correct spelling or grammar you have to watch. Using art to express yourself can help your emotional and physical well-being. It can help you feel freer. Finding a positive and productive way to express yourself is an important step towards becoming a better person. Thinking about the impact art has had on my life and helping me channel my emotions in a positive way. I wanted to use art. I wanted to work towards helping others find a creative and self-sustainable way to express themselves. I decided to research, create, and teach a few lessons based on emotional expression through art. Once my research and the, lessons, and the lesson plans were complete, I taught these lessons to third grade students. I chose this age group because of my research on Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget's theory of child development. In his work, ages 7 to 11 is the concrete operational stage, meaning it is the age when humans begin to connect to the experiences they are having to the emotions they are feeling. Third graders are 8 and 9, which puts them at the middle of the concrete operational stage, so I thought this would be a good age to place my lessons in. In these different third grade classes, we created self-portraits and zentangles, and then a few days after the initial lesson, I revisited the classes for a follow-up discussion. I chose self-portraits and zentangles because drawing self-portraits can help people understand how they want to perceive themselves and how they want others to perceive them. Zentangles are often utilized as a calming activity, which I thought would be a good way to end the class. When, I'm teaching less, when I was teaching the lessons to the students, they would often ask me to help them draw the outline of the face or how to get the eye right. I saw some of them knowing exactly what they wanted their drawing to look like and others not sure. Some kids drew themselves exactly how they looked and others decided to give themselves completely different looks, drawing themselves instead as something felt connected with. The follow-up check-ins afterward allowed the students and I to discuss and better understand why we chose to express ourselves the way we did in their self-portraits. One student shared that they decided to draw themselves um, like a snake because it was their favorite animal. 
One girl said, one boy said that he decided to draw himself in all blue because it was his favorite color. And a girl said that she decided to draw herself with a friend instead of by herself because that friend had been mean to her and it made her feel sad. Now I'd like to play a little video. I'm considering a profession in the field of mental health, and I feel as though my creative spark has been on hold while I've been focused on being a student and a social teenager. I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to learn more about the subject and also reignite my passion for art. Art is something I've always loved, and it is an amazing way to express your emotions, especially when you don't feel like talking about them to others. Approximately 80% of people that visit the doctor are there for something stress-related. Therapists and research have found that when your emotions are oppressed and ignored, they don't go away. They build up inside of you, creating both mind and body stress. As Sigmund Freud said, unexpressed emotions will never die. They are buried alive and will come forth later in uglier ways. In the early 1940s, the term art therapy was given its label by artist Adrian Hill. And many other artists and psychologists also started using that term later and throughout this, that decade. Although there was not yet a university course that specialized in art therapy, so people had to go into other mental health-based professions and started incorporating art therapy into their practices. I hope to be able to use what I've learned both in my life, my life and, the people of the li and the lives of the people I care about. Whether it means helping my sister stop when she's getting stressed out to take a minute and untangle, or using what I learned about bottle-up emotions to understand that my brother isn't getting mad at me, he's just upset about something that happened during his day, and I was there when he couldn't suppress his emotions anymore. Let me leave you with a thought of a new way to express yourself. Art. I'd like to thank all the 8th grade Quest teachers for helping me have the confidence to be up here on stage right now. I would also like to thank the 3rd grade teachers and the students for letting me come into their classrooms to teach. And I would like, lastly, I would like to thank the teachers at the beginning of this Quest project that let me interview them to get a better understanding of the subject. Thank you.